We'll start in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And we'll go over some of these verses. And then again, I just want to reiterate um, let you see that the word church, um, and, you know, you can go look up the Greek meaning of the word. And, and, if you, and here's, here's the thing about simply using concordance and looking up a word. The, 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 um, the problem with that, if you don't go back and still read within context, is the straight, um, straight meaning can be construed in ways that aren't accurate if you don't take them in context. All right, you know, that guy who just ran over somebody on the road, that was bad. Now, what does bad mean in the dictionary? Not good. Man, did you see that car I just rode down the road? That thing was bad. Does that mean it was not good? Within the context of how it was spoken, it meant exactly opposite. It meant it was awesome. So uh, sometimes we, we, end up, we end up that way with words. And so you might look up the Greek word for church, and I think it's, it's ecclesia. It's a, it's a, I'm not sure if it's ecclesiastical or not or something along those lines, uh, coming from that root word. But the, the bottom line is if you simply d uh, take that word and then run out and take a couple of scriptures here and there, you're the temple of the Holy Ghost, and say that I am the church, there is an element of truth in that. Um, when taken within the whole context of all the other things said about the church. Individually, we are, yes, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Corporately, we are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet, at the same time, the Bible tells us that the house we worship God in is the church of God. And so, we have to understand when scriptures are saying certain things and they're pointing to them, what are they in reference to and what do they mean and how are they, how are they to be interpreted rightly? And the Bible tells us to rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. So we're just going to read um, about, I don't know, there's about 30 scriptures I have here. I don't know if I get to every one of them, but they all have the word church in them. And I, I just want you to see some different ways that it's used. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Um, it says here, well, there, verse 1, Dare any of you having a matter against another go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world be judged by the saints, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? In other words, God, Paul was saying that the church ought to be judged. I'll tell you right now, we shouldn't have Benny, Sue, and Ellie. There should be such respect for the things of the church that if there's a dispute between them, they come before the, they come before the church, and the church judges the matter and says, uh, Benny, you're wrong. Now give Ellie her money. And he says, okay, I'll do it. That should, that should, how it be, that should be the way it's, it is. There's enough, there's enough respect for the leadership in the church that when those things happen. He says here, should we not judge in the smallest matters? Um, if ye then have judgments of things returning to this life, set them to judge who are at least esteemed in the church. Now, he, now here he's not talking about you being the body, the temple of the Holy Ghost. Right. He's talking about the, that local assembly of believers Amen. That's the church. He's not talking about, you know, uh, you are the church. And see, you can get off on the, you can get off on the deep end with stuff. We don't want to get off on the deep end. Amen. Go to chapter 10. We're not going to, we're not going to really spend a, a whole lot of time on some things unless I just get really, um, caught up with something. Now here we have Paul giving the three different races of men. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 32, give not offense neither to the Jews nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Now here the word church is referring to a race of men. It's talking about those who are born again. So God, now let me say something. Now God recognizes three ethnic origins now. The Jew, the Gentile, and the church. He didn't recognize black, white, and purple. Why'd you say purple? Barney. We have Barney in the church, all right? No, give not offense neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Hallelujah. Uh, so we have to understand the church is considered, a, a, in one sense, a race of men. In, in New Testament th thinking, it is a different category of people. The church is the spiritual offspring of Abraham. The Jew is the natural offspring of Abraham. And the Gentiles, the sinners. Muslims are Gentiles. I would love to hear that. Anyway. Uh, 1 Corinthians eleven eighteen. 18. Uh, so are Hindus. So are those who purport to know the Lord Jesus Christ, but don't. Yes. You know, they join the church. They join a church somewhere. 1 Corinthians um, eleven eighteen. 18. First of all, when you come together in the church. Now, that's in the church. He can't be talking about you. 
Everybody needs to show up in me. And I'm just saying this because uh, there are people, you'll, you'll, they'll run off, they'll get on the deep end, and, they, you know, and every time they see the word church, they think it's referring to them as an individual. I'm the church of God. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. And they, and they begin to misconstrue things, and they start saying, I don't need to go to a building. I am the church. Well, here he says, when you come together in the church. I'm talking about building, a meeting place. He's not even talking about the gather. He's not even talking about the corporate saints being there. He's talking about the place. Because nobody comes together in each other. He is making reference to a location. So when you come together in the church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and I partly believe it. And then he goes on and talks about different things. But again, we're not here to deal, deal with that. Verse 22. What have you not houses in to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them to have not? Now, in other words, now he's talking about, do you despise the house of God? He's talking about houses to eat and drink in. Do you despise the church of God? Now, I know, I know there's going to be other scriptures we read that make the reference to us corporately as the church. I understand that. What I'm trying to say is the word is used differently in different places, and you can't put that blanket meaning on every single one of them. We have to understand that Paul did address the assembly, the assembly place, and use the word church and reference to it. And so therefore, we have to understand that assembly place is part of the Christian life. Not just, I'm the church and wherever I am, I got Jesus and that's all I need. There, there's, there's, there's half-truths form error. They create doctrinal error by taking a half-truth and overemphasizing it. Yes, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost, but that doesn't mean that you don't need to meet in the house of God. All right. Well, that's not a biblical term. Just keep, just sit there in your seat long enough to hear everything I got to say. 1228. Hallelujah. Um, and God set some in the church. Apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles and gifts of healings, helps governments, devise diversity of time. Now here I believe he's talking and making reference to the corporate body. He set some in the corporate body, the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. That is referring to the spiritual thing, not the place you meet, but the body. He set some in the body. He set some in the church. Amen. Are you here? And so there's a reference to the spiritual body. 1 Corinthians 14, 4. Um, here he says, He that speaketh an unknown tongue edifieth himself. He that prophesieth edifieth the church. Now there again he's referring to the corporate body. The corporate body, the building's not edified if you speak in tongues and prophesy. The individual's edified if you speak in tongues. The corporate body is edified if you prophesy. Okay, here, so here this term is used in reference to the corporate body. Uh, look at it in verse 5, and, and I would rather you all speak in tongues, but uh, rather you prophesy, for greater is he that prophesieth and he uh, that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church, again, making reference to the corporate body, may receive edifying. Verse 12, for even so far as much as when you are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church, the corporate body. 19, yet in the church, now here, He's not talking about, he's not in the corporate body. He's talking about the assembly place. Look back up. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all, yet in the church, in the assembly place. I'd rather speak five words of my understanding that my voice might teach others also than 10,000 words than an unknown tongue. Here he says in the church. Okay? He didn't, he didn't, say, he didn't say yet uh, around the church or with the church. He said in the church. So he's not in them. So he's talking about the assembly place. So here we have twice in this one chapter it's used in reference to the corporate body and then he comes right back and uses the word church in reference to the meeting place. Now let me say this. They are, they are uniquely connected. Yes. Where we meet as a body and the corporate body are uniquely committed, are, are connected. There is a connection. There are anointings that can reside in places. Hello? You can get the tangible anointing into a building. Well, I don't believe it. Let me go to a bar, see if you don't see some demonic anointing. Now, I'm not suggesting you, you go in, but just ride by the strip clubs out there on Wind Avenue or, or on the, some of the other places in town. You just got to ride. I mean, you don't have to. Yeah, it's not, that's, that's not a shady part of town. Pat. No, they're right there on the main drag. I can tell you, you can sense the spiritual atmosphere when you go by. Buildings can absorb anointing. 
materials can absorb anointing. I don't believe that. Then why do you think Acts 19.12 is in the Bible? Or is it 12.19? Which is it, Bill? Handkerchiefs went from Paul. Huh? 19.12. God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul so much so that aprons and handkerchiefs and cloths went from his body when they were laid on the sea. The evil spirits went out of them and they were healed. What? The anointing was transferred into material. Okay? So a spiritual atmosphere can be established in a place. Now, we need to understand that. Well, uh, if I'm full of the Holy Ghost, it don't matter where I am, nothing will affect me. Then why did Jesus take people outside of town to get them away from certain crowds? You're not better than Jesus, and you're not more powerful than Jesus, and you don't have more of the Holy Ghost than Jesus. And if he had to withdraw people out of certain atmospheres, and you will too. That went over big. See, we, 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 get, we get weird. I got all the power. One guy said, I got all nine gifts. Hello? Of the Spirit and all the ministry gifts. I, I have all the ministry gifts operating me, and I'm apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, and have all nine gifts of the Spirit functioning in me, and all nine pe uh, parts of the fruit of the Spirit functioning in me, uh, and I'm just on call 24-7. You're lying. Like a hound dog on a hot summer afternoon. And you'll get more specific, a bloodhound. They, they're some of the laziest dogs you'll ever see. Anyway. Moving right along, since you enjoyed that so much. Verse 23, if therefore the whole church become, now back, he's back to what? Uh, we come together into one place and I'll speak with them. What's back? He's back to the, using it as a corporate term. The body, the corporate body. The, the, if the whole church, if the whole corporate body come together into one place and speak with tongues and there come in that are unlearned or unbelievers, well, they say you're mad. We're not going to get into all that. That's not our message tonight. Um, but if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church. What? In the meeting place. See? He's back and using it in reference to the building. Let him speak to himself and God. Hallelujah. Verse 35. And if they will learn anything, let them ask your husbands in a home, for it's a, shame, it's, a shame, it's a shame for women to speak in the church. Not talking about the corporate body, talking about the place. And we're not going to get into women on that one on tonight. That's not our, that's not our point. Um... Paul goes in chapter 15, verse 9, I am the least of the apostles and not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God, the corporate body. So we make it here, it's back to the, you being used in reference to the corporate body. So you can see by how it's used what he's talking about. And I'm making this a really strong point because too many people have got into error over the years about them being the church and then mis misappropriating Scripture and misapplying Scripture to the degree it brought them into error and, and, and actually destruction because they didn't want to go to church or they didn't want to be submitted to a pastor. They didn't want to be involved in the body. All these things began to function in their life. And they, they said, I don't, need to, I, don't need to go to, I don't need to go to a place. That place is not the church. Well, the Bible actually calls it the church in places. All right. Uh, 59, 16, 19. Hallelujah. Where is that? Let's see here. Uh, the churches of Asia salute you. Now, I'm, I'm kind of in, in the sense, well, let's go here. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much, Lord, with the church that is in their house. Now, you could, you could kind of, you really look at this both ways. You can look at it as the corporate bodies of Asia uh, do, and the, and the corporate body that's in his house salutes you. Or you can see it. And let me say this. A lot of times you just kind of have to get to the point you understand that the place you meet and the corporate body there is kind of interchangeable to a, to a degree. This is Faith and Victory Church. But you are the corporate body. The building that we meet in is where the, where the individuals assemble. The corporate comes together. Okay? And so... Um, Understand that. Look over in 2 Corinthians 1.1. 1, 1. Um, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corneth, with all the saints that are in, and all in all, which are all in Achaia, or Achaia. Now, here again, it could be, really, it's, it's kind of difficult to tell here, because he didn't make it delineated, but I think he could be talking about the building or the people. You know, or, or, or the, the combined reference. That group that meets over here at this house, that group, that's the, that them. Okay? Sometimes, sometimes it's not exactly straightforward and clear, but it's, you know, doesn't mean you can use it any way you want to use it. All right? Galatians 1.1. 1, 1, I'm sorry. Galatians 1.13. 
For you've heard of my conversation in time past of the Jews' religion, how beyond measure I persecuted the church of God. Here it is referring to the corporate body. He didn't persecute a building, he persecuted people. Amen. Ephesians 1.22. Does this help anybody? I just want to know, am I just over, inform over informationalizing you or are you getting some understanding out of this? It was real quiet. He says here, and put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Here it's referring to the spiritual body. Three, uh, 310. To the intent and purposes, and to the intent now and unto the principalities and powers of heavenly places might be known by the church, again the corporate body, the manifold wisdom of God. Uh, verse 21. Uh, unto him be glory in the in, in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without him. Here, now here in this particular case, I, I think by the way he uses it unto him be glory in the church. I believe he's talking about the glory of God in the corporate body. Okay? Because his glory is in us. Amen? And it can be physically manifest in a building. It can be dual reference here. In the building and in the people. I believe the emphasis is on the individual or the corporate body here. Because you can have, see, I can't be in you, as it was here, when some, but, but his glory can be in you. So, in this way, you see, again, context. Context has so much to do with how we interpret Scripture and rightly divide it. Hallelujah. Here he's talking about the glory of God. Well, that can be in us. Amen. And unto him be glory in the church, in the corporate body by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. And uh, looking down into Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. Hallelujah. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. That's talking about his body. Uh, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, the body is subject unto Christ. So let the husbands be, I mean, the wives be unto their own husbands in everything. Verse 27, uh, that he might present it to himself a glorious church. Talking about the body, not having spot or wrinkle. Verse 29, for no man yet ever hated it, um, his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as the Lord the church. He's talking about his corporate body. Verse 32, <clears throat> this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church, the corporate body. Philippians chapter 3, verse 6. And he says, um, concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Paul persecuted the, in, the, the people, not the buildings. Chapter 4, verse 15. Uh, it says here that uh, now New Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church, not it is a group of people or, a, you know, so again, not necessarily the building, but the group of people, no church communicated with me as giving and receiving, but ye only. Colossians 1, 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. And what's, the, what's he talking about there? The body, the corporate body, uh, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and all things he might have preeminent. Verse 24, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind in my afflictions in Christ, in my flesh, for his body's sake. Listen, for his body's sake, which is the church. Now you're going to have people say, that's it, the Bible says his, his body is the church. Well, yes, it does. But hold on to your seatbelt. Run over to 1 Timothy chapter 3. Same writer. Hmm. Verse. 1 Timothy. Uh -huh. 15. But if I tarry long, thou oughtest, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of of God, which is the church. Now back over here in Colossians, he said the body was the church. Then he says that the house of God is the church. How you ought to behave yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. The pillar and the ground of the truth. You understand that depending on what you're talking about, that term can be used to refer to the body or to the place you meet. Amen. Amen. And, I, and, I'm gonna, and when I get done, I'm going to come back and say something. All right, I'm going to finish reading these scriptures. We're, we're, we're going to go read a few more. Hallelujah. I jumped ahead of my, my scripture passage there. You know what? We'll just stop there. I think, have you gotten the point? All right, you gotten the point. It's used different ways. Here we have two scriptures. One says his body, which is the church. He comes right over in another letter and says how you ought to behave yourself in the house of God, which is the church. 
well, there was pa Paul was uh, was double talking. Paul was no, 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 no. He was he he was using the term in two different ways. And, one, and many times the scripture is used in reference to the corporate body, and other times it's used as the assembly place. And here he makes it very clear that the house, so, so when people, people say, let's go to church, and somebody goes, I'm the church, I don't have to go to church. Read your Bible, dodo brain. Some people just open their mouth and let everybody know they're stupid. And they do it with such zeal and authority. And then those who are unlearned and ignorant are, 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 are brought into to error because of dodo brain. Is that too harsh, Benny? No. I'm just right. All right. So let me say this. The higher use of the term church is the corporate body because we are the spiritual body of the Lord. I, I, I get that, I understand that, and I'm not demeaning that, and I'm not trying to bring that down. I'm not trying to say that <clears throat> the, the building we meet in is more important than the corporate body itself. Because, see, we could all pack up and go somewhere else and meet, and that become our church. Like, you understand that? I get that. Yet, the inference often made is that we don't need to meet, that the building and the meeting place is not the church, it's not of importance, as long as we understand we're the temple of the Holy Ghost, we're the church, that's all we need to understand. We can just sit at home and have our own hoorahs with God and amen and hallelujah. And if we want to bring up three or four people over and have our own personal Bible studies and be not submitted to anybody, not have any apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, or teachers ever ministering in our life to bring us to perfection because we are the all gifts in the Spirit and locked up in the one, we are the man. Hallelujah. Amen. And listen, I don't think there's anything. You know, the house, a house church is simply something you would do in an intermediate stage between gathering a group of people and, and getting something established and then going somewhere else and establishing a permanent location. Yeah. That's what it's, 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 these places in the Bible, we find out as, as, as time went on, they began to move into permanent places, at least, especially by the time John wrote the, the Revelation. Can I just go ahead and just take care of another church sacred cow? The book we refer to as the book of Revelations, we call it Revelations, many times it's the book of Revelations, but if you read in your King James Bible or most Bibles, it says, the Revel at the top when it names the book, it's called the Revelation of St. John the Divine. And verse 1 says, the Revelation of Jesus Christ. How hard is it to figure out that if John called it the Revelation of Jesus Christ, then it wasn't the Revelation of St. John the Divine. <laughs> the Bible itself called it the Revelation of Jesus Christ. The book should be called the Revelation of Jesus Christ, not the Revelation of St. John the Divine. <laughs> He's no more divine than you are. He was born again. He's a child of God. He's a saint. So are you. Hallelujah. But by his time, we know that, he, that, that when Jesus appeared to him and he began to talk to the seven churches, he said unto the church of, the, uh, of this one and the church of that, and he listed seven churches, all of them listed, all of them in, a, in an area in Asia Minor on what we refer to as a postal road. There was a route. And those seven churches were all on that postal route. And when he appeared to John uh, on the Isle of Patmos, or some people say Patmos, uh, but wherever, they, you know, Patmos, Patmos, um, and gave that revelation, he had something to say naturally to each congregation and spiritually. Each, each thing was this natural and a spiritual thing. And address each of those seven churches on that postal route. Hallelujah. Amen. They weren't meeting in people's houses. They were meeting in a, in a location. And, I always, and something Tony Cook shared when he was talking about this. He said, you know, of, of the seven churches, there's two churches he did not have anything against. And one of those churches was the smallest church. The biggest church of all, the mega church, he had something against them. And so you would think, um, instead of going to the, the little church, he said, you bunch of lazy bums, you hadn't grown yet. He didn't rebuke them for anything. But he rebuked five of the others. It's real interesting. That's just food for thought. Now, 
So meaning in a home is a temporary thing. It's, you know, I, I've had people make doctrines. I, I know people make doctrines out of house church. Well, who's the pastor? Oh, we don't have a pastor. Yeah. We're a New Testament church. No, you're not. Yeah. Because what you're saying is uh, that you want to go back to the infancy stage of the church. We haven't grown. We haven't matured. What, if, what would the writer say? He said, give, uh, give word, the, the labor is worthy of the especially those. Give honor to whom honor is due, especially those who labor in word and deed. In other words, there was, and you understand this, that when the church was first instituted, everybody was a babe. So what did they do? They took the older and mature people and put them in charge as elders, as it were, to oversee until ministry gifts were developed and, and grew up. The anointing began to manifest and people became ministry gifts. And though the, the elders that worked among them were to be honor, worthy of double honor, especially those who labored in word and deed. In other words, it began to be some of the elders, the older people, actually became ministry gifts. And they became worthy of double honor, especially them. And we see the church, and then by the time the letter is written to the churches in Asia Minor, the stars are the pastors, symbolically speaking. Those stars are the pastors of those congregations. And it, I mean, the, the things are written to the, to the angel of the church, I and mean, it's not talking about the angel, it's talking about the, the, the leader. A lot, of, a lot of symbolism in Revelation, you understand there's a lot of symbolism there. But the leaders had been raised up. Pastors had been raised up. Those men were running the churches. You're not a New Testament church if you meet in the house a bunch of old people running it. <laughs> you may be, you know, you can't, this, uh, you can't, you can't pattern that. Now listen, we can, we can pattern the church after the book of Acts in experience. But you can't necessarily pattern the, the New Testament, the church, after the book of Acts in structure and organization and administration. How do you know that? Because we have epistles written to the church and many things are said about organization and administration and so forth and so on. Paul wrote pastoral letters. Yeah. And in some places, it said, let no man, let lay hands on no man suddenly. If any uh, uh, desire the office of a bishop, he must be this. Yeah. And he gives, and what happens? See, back in the early days, they just took older people and put them in charge. No, in the older days. In the beginning of the church, but as the church matured and, and, and doctrine and revelation and understanding of administrations came into being, there were things written to the church that says, now look, if you're, you're going to have people who are going to be a bishop, here's some qualifications they got to follow. Husband of one wife, not given to, to, to strong drink. I mean, you know, rules his house well. Goes on and lists a bunch of stuff. Well, I can tell you a bunch of house churches I know about, you got people who, who don't qualify. Hello. Well, they've been saved 30 years. You can be saved 30 years and still be given to liquor. Still want to have some strong drink. Don't run your house well. Don't train your children. I know Christians who don't train their children. Now, then I'm going to get back up on that again. I shouldn't get off on that again. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, came, came, we had somebody come to church one time. They moved, they moved here. They've moved away since. They came in, moved in, said, I don't believe in spanking. What? Well, we do and we teach it. So if you want to come to church here, okay, but I'm going to tell you, you're going to hear me say we teach that. I don't believe in spanking. Well, you don't believe the Bible. Yeah, some of the kids that like. Anyway, did I say that? You didn't hear that, did you, Benny? No, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Benny heard it, oh boy. <laughs> <coughs> so understand, we're going to have house church. Well, the Bible talks about people meeting in their house. Yeah, but then you look at the circumstances sometimes they were met in the house. They were kicked out of the synagogues. There was no place for them to meet. They had to meet somewhere, so they met in somebody's home. Because of the persecution, because of the, the uh, uh, 
The same thing happened when, remember the Bible talks about that they, they brought all, they went and sold everything they had and they brought it to the apostles' feet and sat at their feet and said they had all things in common. People think it was supposed to have communism. No. That was, a, that was a time of persecution. People had been written off. Their families had disowned them. They had funerals for them. They were no longer part of their family. There was no income, no place they could get a job, couldn't work. And people who had obtained wealth, they sold their property and everybody, it was a survival thing. It wasn't a model for utopia. Oh, you know, we're going to have communism. The Bible teaches talk communism. No, it didn't teach it. It was a survival thing. People pulled their resources to survive. Not because it was a model. Hello. Because Paul comes back and writes doctrine and says, if it don't work, you don't eat. Whatsoever you sow, that shall you reap. If you give sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. Paul said that, by the way. Grace preacher. Just saying. He didn't say just because you're in the grace, you're going to get it no matter what. He said, if you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. <laughs> now, grace will cause you to abound if you sow. <laughs> and it's so. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So, we understand that um, the church, the location, the assembling, the place we meet is referred to as the church. It is the center of Christian activity for the believer. We need each other. We need, the place. we need a place that we can meet. We need a place to come together. We need a place, and, you know, um, and even this, you know this, when you go visit another church, if you don't go there regularly, it's, it's sometimes it's awkward. There's a different, a different anointing, a different spiritual atmosphere in there because there's a different uh, leader and there's a different anointing on him. It's not, a, it's not an ungodly anointing, it's just a different one. No, no, no pastors are exactly alike. You're not going to walk in one church and walk into another church and they're going to be precisely alike. They may believe the same, practice the same, have the same experiences, but the leadership has a calling and anointing on them that will be differently manifest. Doesn't mean it's wrong. Doesn't mean one's better than the other. It just means they're different. And when you've been under one anointing and you go somewhere else, it's different. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Now, now, how many know that Brother Copeland and Brother Hagin pro preached faith? Yeah. Two totally different types of anointings. When you're listening to Brother Copeland, even when Brother Copeland copied Brother Hagin's sermons verbatim, <laughs> named them the same name, it wasn't the same. There was a different anointing on Brother Copeland and on Brother Hagin. You know, and you got people who can sit there and listen to Copeland preach that exact sermon and get get it stuff out of it, and others who can listen to Brother Hagin preach that exact sermon and get something out of it, and the others listen to the other ones and not get anything out of it. No, I'm not saying not get anything, but not get the same out of it because there's different anointings in there, and they're they're attached or connected to that anointing in a, in a different way. That's how it works. That's why we God said enough of us in the church to meet everybody. And so as we look at this, we begin to understand that the local church meeting place is a place for the corporate body to come assemble together. And in that meeting place, the corporate body receives instructions, um, receives strength, uh, edifies one another, supplies one another. But the meeting place is important. Amen. There's a place you go. There's a place you can come to. There's a place that's, that is a safe harbor for you. And then when the, the, the corporate body is there, we function within that building. Okay? And all I'm, all I'm trying to say here is, uh, don't let people who are, who are off the wall with some, straight, some extreme stuff get you where you're going, well, I don't need to go to church. People say, I don't need to go to church, or I need house church. You know, so-and-so runs our house church. Is he a pastor? Oh, no. We don't believe in pastors. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. We don't believe in pastors. Now, we've had people visit our church and come in our church and believe that way and think they're spiritual and think they're following God. They're rebellious. And I'm just going to tell you, if you're sitting at home and refuse to go sit, up, submit, sit under a pastor, and, I'm not, and I, I don't know who you are, but I can tell you, if you want to sit in the church and submit to a pastor, you're rebellious. You have a rebellious spirit. And God, and you are, I, I don't receive that. I got a house church and I run it. That's usually what's happening. You're running it. Because you can't submit. You need a pastor. I got a pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, my, my kids now call Pastor Hagen Dad Hagen. 
You know, he's, he, he, they, they, they love the Hagans. They just love the Hagans. And, and we're glad they do. I'm glad they got to grow up under, under, under Dad Hagan, and now they, 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 uh, they just love Pastor and Sister Lynette so much. They're, it's just a wonderful thing to see. Hallelujah. And uh, we're excited for that. Amen. And uh, he gives them hugs. They go up and speak to them at, at, at church. If they see them, they walk over and speak to them. Pull, I mean, just walk right up to the girls and say, hey, how you doing? How's your mom and dad? Talk to them and stuff. And it's, just a, it's just a blessing. Amen. Amen. But my, my pastor's my pastor. You know? If I need help, that's, why, that's somewhere I'm going, I'm going back there to look for help. Amen. Y'all hear you going home. When we were at um, our regional retreat, uh, Pastor Coyne was there, and he, he had Pastor's private cell phone number, and, and it was Pastor Hagen's birthday, so he called him up, and we, were all, we all sang happy birthday to him. <laughs> they were out eating somewhere. We just, about 80 or so, or so of us just sang happy birthday to him. See, ministers need pastors. We have to be submitted. I mean, if Pastor calls me up and says, Ed, you're teaching, you're teaching that grace stuff wrong, which he wouldn't. But anyway, <laughs> I'd have to listen. Well, Pastor, well, how am I doing it wrong? You're not hard enough. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Knowing him, you need, to, you need to really clean the plow there. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you, you, when people refuse to, you know, I want a house church or, I, you know, no, 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 you can't have a house church. Go look at the people who run them things. Thank you. Well, I, and they're all real spiritual. They get real spiritual. Well, the Bible says, and they'll go get these scriptures where it talks about the church and their house. Well, read the ones where, 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 where the church matured a little bit. Hello. Find the ones where it said, don't lay hands on, you know, let the elders rule. Submit to those who have the rule over you. Find the scriptures that start demonstrating the maturing church and the growing church and the establishment of administration and governments in the church and understand that's what took place. And so you can't go back to the house church model per se. I, look, again, I say, if you're, you know, you got people getting together and, they, and they're bringing in a pastor and the pastor's, you know, coming in, he's saying, I'm supposed to be here and they're starting a church and they're meeting in a home temporarily until they can get, that's, that's one thing. But you, people don't refer to house church as a temporary setting. We have a house church. No. And you, you go talk to them, you'll find out. Don't nobody preach the Bible. But us. You know what I found out? There's some Baptists got more revelation about the new birth than some Pentecostal and Word of Faith people. That would never be. Hello? Got more revelation about soul winning than some word of faith people ever have. You don't have all truth. You're not the walking Bible. You might be a walking concordance like Brother Bill, but you're not a walking Bible. Hello. So, again, we're, so we're, we're trying to make this point that the local assembly place is an intricate part in the daily life of the believer. That, you, that, that the scriptures do support the idea that the, uh, the building is the church of God. These things I write unto you that you know, may us know how to behave yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. So the place we meet in, well, we could, you know, because I know people who think, well, you can have rock and roll concerts or, you know, so um, uh, die hard, one, two, three, and four, unedited in the church, because we're free. My goodness. You need a filter on die hard to watch it at home. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, Bruce Willis is cool, but I mean, he, there's a few words dropped in there too many times. I mean, you, you gotta go get sanctified all over. If you, but I mean, you, my grandma would probably think you're gonna die and go to hell if, you, if she didn't even knew you ever watched it. You know, we had that little TV guardian thing. I don't like what it does because it blocks out whole sentences and stuff. But I mean, something it's just better than listening to stuff sometimes. You know, it's better. And um, anyway, but you know, well, because it's not—it's it's just a building. No, it's more than a building. Yeah. 
And then the people use it to say, I don't have to go to church. Yes, you, yes, you do. You need to go to church. You need to be in a building that has believers in it, that has a pastor, that there is authority, that there is administration, that there are governments in operation, and that you're submitted to. Stop throwing those Nerf balls at your television. If you're going to throw something at television, throw a baseball. If you're going to be that angry, you ought to pay, pay the price. Now, I'm messing with you now. Amen. We need to come to understand that, that there's, there's, there's functions of the building. There's anointings that can reside in a physical place. Amen. Amen. The anointing just, yeah. hey, do you remember when Elijah died, the anointing rested in his bones so strong that it raised somebody from the dead after he was de decomposed? His flesh had rotted away. All the little mites and animals and little buggies had come up and, and, de and decomposed the body and taken all the flesh off the body. But the bones had so much anointing in them. Bones had raised somebody from the dead. Without, they threw that, that kid killed in battle down in the, into the sepulcher and rolled up against the bones and raised him from the dead. And when he came running out of that cave, you cannot believe how fast the other guys ran. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably going, how? How? How oh my? <laughs> anyway. So the church is the first, the fourth most important priority of life. You need to come to the meeting place. Because yeah. yeah. I've heard people say things like, I was glad when they said, let us go up to the house of the Lord. I've heard people go, oh, well, I'm the house of God now. In part, that's true. But where we gather is also the house of God. Bible says it is. Now, does that replace the corporate body or have a higher whatever? Other than, no. But it's still important. And that's what I'm trying to make the point. I'm trying to get it really clear. So that when somebody comes to you and says these stupid things, you're going tilt, 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 Lulu. Oh, they just poured him out of the box of granola, Christian. Yeah. Fruits, nuts, and flakes all packaged together in the same box. Sunshine, sun, yeah, I got it. Sunshine's going, I got it. I got it. Because I've heard you say it a thousand times, Pastor. Granola Christians. I'm going to do a sermon on granola Christians. Hallelujah.